Okay, now we're gonna look at how to identify outliers in a data set. So an outlier is a data value that differs significantly from the rest of the data set. So you might look at your data set and you might say, hmm, that number is a whole lot bigger or a whole lot smaller than all of the other numbers in my data set. Maybe that data value is an outlier. Well, we have a way to actually check to make sure that the data value is or is not an outlier. And we have two formulas we're gonna follow. So the first one is the lower fence. So this is our lower boundary for determining outliers. Any data value smaller than this lower fence value is considered an outlier. And the lower fence is calculated by taking your first quartile, subtracting 1.5 times the IQR from it. On the other side, we have the upper fence, which is the upper boundary for determining outliers. Any value larger than the upper fence is considered an outlier. And the upper fence is your Q3 value plus 1.5 times the IQR. So we have a data set here, and we're going to determine if this data set contains any outliers. So now in order to use these two formulas, we need to determine Q1, Q3, and the IQR. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put this data in order because this data is actually not in order for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and start listing out the data. So 49, and then I can go ahead and cross it out because I'm writing it down below here. So we have 49 and then it looks like 71. I don't actually know what the answer to this is. 74, 75. I'm gonna put commas in between these. Oh, and I see another 75. And then 76, 77, 78, 78. Um, two 80s. Eighty-one, eighty-two, eighty-four, and I'm trying to squeeze this because I'm running out of room again. All right, so there's my data in order. It's a little squished at the end, but it's there. So first, I need to determine the median, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen data data values. So I know that the median is going to be the average of the two middle values. So I'm going to cross out one from each side until I'm left with two values in the middle. Here we go, 77 and 78 are the two values that I'm going to find the middle of for the median. So 77 plus 78 over two is 77.5. So now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this stuff. So my median is 77.5. So the values below the median are 49, 71, 74, 75, 75, 76, and 77 is less than 77.5. So it gets included in this half of the data. So then to find the median of this half, we have seven values. So we're looking for the middle value. So I'm just crossing one out from each side until I'm left with one value in the middle. And that's my Q1. And then I'm gonna do this again with all of the numbers that are bigger than the median. So again, the median is 77.5. So we have 78, 78, 80, 80, 81, 82, and 84. So I'm going to find the middle of this one. Again, we have seven numbers. So crossing out one from each side until I'm left with one number in the middle. So this is Q3. So now I'm going to go ahead and find the IQR. I'm going to do it over on this side. So the IQR, remember, is the difference between Q3 and Q1. So for our data, our Q3 value is 80, our Q1 value is 75. 
So we have an IQR or an interquartile range of five. Now I can go ahead, I'm gonna switch pen colors here. I can go ahead and calculate the lower fence and the upper fence. So I'm gonna do the lower fence first, which is LF. And following the formula up here, Q1, which is 75 minus 1.5 times, we have an IQR of five. Now remember your order of operations. Multiplication comes before subtraction. So you wanna do 1.5 times five first, which gives you 75 minus 7.5. Then you can go ahead and do that subtraction. If you do the subtraction and then multiply by five, you are going to get the wrong number. So we have 67.5 as our lower fence. And then I'm gonna repeat this with the upper fence. So the upper fence is Q3, which was 80, plus 1.5 times the IQR, which was 5. Again, you want to do the multiplication before you do the addition. So 1.5 times 5 is still 7.5. So then we get 87.5. Now, I want to go back and look at my data, and I want to ask myself, are there any numbers less than the lower fence? Any numbers smaller than 67.5? Well, in fact, there is a number less than 67.5. 49 is less than 67.5. So 49 is an outlier. It is significantly different from the rest of the data. The next data value is 71, which is not smaller than 67.5. So 71 is not an outlier. So now I can go look at the other side. So I'm looking for any number bigger than 87.5. My maximum, my biggest number in my data set is 84. 84 is not bigger than 87.5, so 84 is not an outlier. So 49 is the only outlier in this data set. So we're not gonna do anything besides acknowledge that we have an outlier. At this point, you can maybe look and make sure, ooh, maybe was that supposed to be like a 69? Or something did we mistype in the in the data when we were writing it down if we didn't mistype anything then we just have an outlier okay so that is how you are going to calculate and identify if you have outliers in your data set